Hi, welcome to Micro 130 Fall 2020 Edition. This video will give you an overview of the course, where you can find the basic resources, and hopefully some tips on how you can maximize success. So I don't want to take too much time. Let's jump right in. So make your way to La Lima, and then log in as you normally do. And then find the tab for our course. So we are Micro 130 Fall 2020, I guess Fall 20. And then when you click on that, you're going to go to the home page. The home page provides a basic overview of uh, everything that you need, including our schedule and our resources. So over here, this is my name, Dr. K. Um, I have an office, uh, but of course, nowadays, uh, office hours are by appointment. Always welcome to contact me. I have a phone number, but uh, I prefer emails, right? So um, because emails kind of provides a running record of uh, our communication, the phone, you really, you catch me if you catch me, right? And then um, it's kind of hard because I have a shared office to catch on my voicemail. I do send out email announcements uh, on a semi-regular basis, more at the beginning than towards the end, right? So make sure that you check your hawaii.edu email frequently, but you should be doing that anyways as a future professional. If you want to, you can uh, sign up to receive um, text message alerts or uh, alerts through the Remind app, right? So just click on here for more details. You can download an app, it's a cross-platform. And then anytime I send out some sort of email announcement, I'll also send out a little remind notice saying that, hey, I sent out an email announcement, just go check it out right now, All right? So whatever is your preference. The textbook we're using is a free open source textbook, so let's just click on it. You can just click on this, and then that'll take you to our OpenStax book uh, called da -da -da -da, Microbiology. Many ways to access this thing. If you want to, you can just hit table of contents and then that'll give you uh, all the chapters that we are gonna look at. And I'll show you how to know what chapter we're looking at for each module. Um, view online pretty much takes you to the same place, right? So you can just click on any one of these and that'll take you to the page that you want. Uh, but I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to go back. There we go. If you prefer, there's an app that you can download. So the one thing about this book is that you're going to require uh, online access to view it. If you don't want to view it online, what you can do is you can simply download a PDF. So you can download the PDF, put it in your viewer, or if you actually click this two more options, um, you can download it for iBooks or for Kindle, right? So you can always have this book with you on hand. Uh, and then in this case, you wouldn't need uh, online access, right? So you can have it for fun reading. And we know we like our fun reading, right? To get back to the homepage, just click on homepage and then that'll take you back to our homepage. So the other thing is that, um, and I'm gonna say this now, I'm gonna say it again, check the discussion board every day. There's gonna be discussions, there's gonna be various things that happen. They're not often announced, the things that go on there, right? So just check, you know, usually what I do is uh, when I log in, I check, when I log out, I check. And then this is the part that's probably gonna be most relevant to you. So this is our schedule for the semester. This is our module start, this is our module end. And then if you click on each one of these, it gives you the content of each of the modules, okay? So one of the things that I wanna say about the, the schedule is that generally um, modules run for a week, right? So if you, let's look down here, you know, we have a week, this would be uh, Saturday to Sunday, Saturday to Sunday. Um, but our first module, because of this late registration, you know, we actually get, I think until the, almost the middle of the second week for uh, late registration, um, our first module runs much longer than the other modules, right? So we're actually gonna start at a very slow pace. You got a long time to handle the first module. Right, so don't be fooled by that. Just try to get into the habit of doing the same things every week. So what are we doing every week? Let's click on our first module, and you have to scroll up. All right, so a couple things then here for each of the modules, uh, we have our lecture notes, and then we have our lectures, right? So our PowerPoint lectures. So a couple ways uh, you can handle each one. So let me show you the lecture notes first, right? So here are the lecture notes. And notice the lecture notes have blanks in them, right? So this gives you a little bit more of an active engagement when you're watching the lectures. Just fill it in, right? You don't have to write down everything, right? In fact, uh, oftentimes through the lecture, you know, I'll add a little um, enrichment here and there, right? So you can write various things around the edges, whatever it is that you want, however it is that you want to do it, right? You know, you do you. Um, if you want to download this, you can just hit file and then you can download and then you can download it as a PDF if you want to print it and handwrite. You can download it as a Word document if you want to type it in. You know, again, whatever works for you. I generally find that the handwriting works best for me, um, but again, whatever works, right? And then we have two ways that you can access the, the lectures, right? So I'm just going to do the non-narrated one first, right? So the 
The non-narrator one is uh, just the slides, right? So it's a standard lecture slide, right? So you can go and look at our various slides. Um, this would be the lecture content, right? So this will be exactly the same as the narrated lectures, right? And so you can go through, and in fact, if you just want to go and brush up on a couple things, you can go and check one of these things out, uh, go back to the individual slides, rather than listening to the whole video, which I'll show you in a second. Um, again, if you want to, you can hit the download and then download it as a PDF or whatever it is that you want, right? So then you can have this for offline viewing, right? The uh, modules are not going to go in order. So we don't go chapter one, two, three, four, right? And each module necessarily isn't one chapter. And sometimes I mix a few things here and there, right? So the way you want to look at these is look at this number right here, right? So 1.3 means chapter one, section three. So when you go back to our, our uh, table of contents, right? We have our chapter one, section three, right? So that's where the content comes for this slide. And then you'll see that as we go through, you're going to see that all of these come from section chapter one, section three, right? And then as we move forward here, you'll notice that, oh, we jumped to chapter seven, right? So you're going to see various things. And then there's one more thing I wanted to show you. Where you see A, that's the appendix, right? So some of the content uh, in this book, they do try to minimize and not overwhelm uh, in this book. So the some of the content, they'll just kind of throw to the back, right? So A dot A means appendix A. So kind of bounce around. And then I think on occasion, what you're going to also see is um, just something like this. You know, I felt like this was important. It doesn't really come from any one specific part of your book. They kind of sprinkle this out here and there. So these are almost like standalone slides. OK, so that's how you can use your book in support of the, um, the lectures. Now, keep this in mind. All the quiz and exam material comes from the lectures themselves. Right. So the book is a crutch to help you fill in some of these words, right? Because, you know, your book has content. Um, that content gets like really distilled down to a few words, i.e. these bullet points in your lectures, right? So sometimes when uh, you need a few more words to explain what's on the slide, you can go to the book to help, right? And it actually helps to read the book. It kind of provides a little bit more context to the content. I'm not going to make a mandatory reading, but over time you'll find that, you know, when you read the book, and then listen to the lecture, it often helps fill in a lot of these gaps, right? Because if you read just the lectures, sometimes there's just not enough words for it to make sense. And really, at the end of the day, what you're going to be doing is just memorizing everything. And it's kind of a lot of material to memorize. That's generally the worst way you want to learn anything, right? But again, you're going to be busy people. You're going to have a lot of different courses that you're taking. So do what works for you. Okay then, so on a weekly basis, what you're going to be doing is, of course, you're going to access the lecture. Uh, you can, oh, I forgot, you can click on the narrated PowerPoints and then that'll take you to our lectures, right? So you can go and click on these and then watch it. Notice, by the way, uh, they are long. And in the past, people have said, oh my goodness, these things are so long. Yeah, you know what? These videos are like a week's worth of content, right? three or four lecture classes. So their videos are not meant for you to watch them in one sitting. Right? Who has the time to sit here and listen to something for an hour and 40 minutes? I mean, nowadays we have trouble sitting through a movie for an hour and 40 minutes, right? So I recommend you watch these things in 20 to 30 minute chunks, right? Or whatever you feel comfortable. Because to be honest, there's going to be a point in your brain when it just shuts out, right? And Listen to yourself as you are watching these lectures. And if at any one point you are thinking about something else, it means your brain has tuned out and you are not paying attention. So you're wasting your time. At that point, pause. Take a break and then uh, come back to it, right? Just note, okay, so I went two seconds into this video. Uh, make a little note on your notes, right? And when you come back, you just fast forward to the two second mark. Because, you know, again, I think some people don't realize this. You can fast forward and rewind. If you miss something, just rewind it, right? So. Very simple, very easy way to use these lectures. Each week, what you're going to do is you're going to access the lectures, right? You're going to either watch the video. If you don't like the sound of my voice, you can go and read the slides, right? But, you know, the lectures is probably the better way to do it. Um, fill in the notes and then take the quiz, right? So we have uh, each module is going to have a quiz. So you're actually not going to see this view. Let's see. You're going to see this view, right? So this is what your view is going to look like. And then notice none of these are open yet. So you actually can't do anything to them yet. Right. But when it's your turn, uh, just click on it. And then a couple of things. Each quiz is uh, 20 questions. 
um, and then you'll have 30 minutes to complete it, okay? Um, now, the questions come from a pool of uh, X amount, right? Anywhere from like 70-something to like 100-something questions, right? And it's this random draw of 20 questions. You get three tries, and then I keep only the highest score, okay? So you should take all three tries. The reason for that is because the exams draw from the same pool of questions, right? So on the exam, for which it's 50 questions, one hour, on the exam, you may see the same quiz questions, okay? So by completing the quiz three times, you get maximum opportunity to see as much of the pool as possible, which of course will help, right? But understand this, and again, some people, let's go quote unquote, have complained about this, right? Oh, on the exam, I didn't see these questions before. Well, you know what, in most courses, you're not gonna see the exam questions before. So don't go into the exam thinking you're gonna see every single question study the content and in fact when you're going through your quizzes you, of course it's open book you're welcome to use your notes but try not to use your notes keep them beside you right it's stupid to say well he says not to use my notes i'm just gonna throw them away right keep them beside you try to answer the question especially the first time through because you do get three shots at it right study the content pretend like you're not going to use the notes but have them next to you so sometimes you're like oh, oh i remember this was so yeah and then flip 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 bang, that's the answer, right? Generally, you don't want to be doing that for every question, right? If you find yourself doing that for every question, you're going to run out of time and that's going to be an issue, right? So make sure that you come ready for the exam and the quizzes without having to use your notes, but feel safe in the fact that your notes are there for you when you need them, okay? So it's this thing that you, you know, you don't want to use it, but you can use it, right? It's like a seatbelt. Okay, so that's the general content, right? Um, each week also, uh, generally, there's going to be some sort of discussion. And look at that, someone already posted, right? So you can go to our discussion board. Um, what I say is you should use the discussion board all the time. Every time I log in to Lao Lima, every time, first thing I do is I go to the discussion board, I hit recent topics, and then this shows me who's been posting, right? So uh, this is who started the post. This is the last message. And in fact, uh, when... You see this yellow thing? That means there's a new message. When it's white, that means it's red. So actually I can just look here real quickly and say, well, I don't need to click on this one because it's white, but these two are yellow. So I know there are some new posts here that I can go and scroll through. You can also look at the date and the time that it's been posted, right? And say, well, I know I logged in, uh, last I logged in was yesterday. This is today's date, right? So clearly, oh, look at that, it's midnight. Someone's working late. So uh, clearly these are going to be new and then I can go and look at them, right? Now, there's going to be a regular set of discussion assignments that are going to be posted on the discussion board. Generally, I don't announce it, although usually I do through various announcements, right? Um, but check all the time, right? There are a lot of points out there that are relatively easy simply by participating in these discussions. And here are three discussion posts that you're welcome to go and uh, read through and then just post your thoughts, post your feelings about it, right? The other way I want you to use the discussion board, now we're going to go to the discussion home, is that if you have questions, post it here, right? Sometimes it's like very specific questions. You're going to be blah, 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 something specific to you, and then we need to deal with it, email me, right? But sometimes it's a general thing. Oh, I can't find the lecture stuff, or what are the deadlines, right? Believe it or not, sometimes people don't know where to find things, right? Um, those are the things that just stick in the class discussion. Just post it in there and say, hey, there's some things I just don't understand or what are some good study techniques or something like that. Post it here. The other thing I want you guys to do is, do you see this problem with quiz questions, right? Click on that and then um, if you have certain quiz questions which you don't know, right, which you can't figure out, post the problems, right? Because you can review all your quizzes and you should review all your quiz attempts. Don't just take all three quizzes in a row. Take a quiz, review the quiz attempt, right? And then when you go back and you review it, you're going to see which ones you got right and which ones you got wrong. And the ones that you got wrong are not going to be marked with the correct answer. So it's actually your task to find the correct answer using the notes, right? And sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's like, oh, okay, I know it's A or B. You chose A. It's like, eh, that was the wrong one. So then you know it's B. But sometimes you're like, I don't get it. I still don't understand, right? Post it here. And then through the class discussions, um, we can find the right answer, right? And then usually I'll moderate this and make sure that uh, we're getting the correct answer. So whenever someone posts a question, if you know the answer, post, right? 
if you have questions, make sure you post. And then usually if you have quest, uh, problems with quiz questions, check this first real quickly, go through the thread. Oftentimes you'll find your answer there and then you don't have to wait for the turnaround to get your answer, it's, it'll be right there. Uh, we also have a disease profile project forum, right? So there is a group project. Uh, we'll deal with that later. So what you should do is read the syllabus, right? The syllabus is right there. It's also on our homepage, right? Click on the syllabus, read it over, make sure you understand it, make sure you know what you're in for. There's nothing really to do. You're welcome to access the first six modules content if you want to, right? But, you know, I say we still got some time. Unless, of course, you're watching this uh, the first week of the classes, right? So uh, when you are ready, access the content, um, get ready for the quizzes. Uh, and then if you have any questions, I hope you know what to do, right? Post it on the board.